Why do I have a feeling I've just watched a fan service type of episode? Nabi's and Jeon's relationship, I have kind of complained about it before in previous reviews. Their relationship has always been moving forward. It's never progressing. I mean, if you think about the type of people they are, they, they are making this relationship complicated, but they're doing a good job in moving forward. It may dip a bit, but it's still moving forward in a straight line. And their relationship has definitely gone from, I guess, friends with benefits to ending things back to friends with no benefits and now a love triangle now that Sora has inserted herself into the equation. I mean, she was always in the equation to begin with, but I kind of saw her as like maybe the parentheses in the equation, but now she's more of the fraction or the division sign. You know, she wants to divide. Yeah, it's a weird way to put it, but yeah. So at the beginning of the episode, it starts off with Jeon overhearing these two girls. So one of the girls was able to reject Jeon. I guess she knows how he is. But she also says, unfortunately, Nabi couldn't reject him. Then fast forward, we get to the part where that random guy comes up to Jeon and punches him in the face. And he kept saying, why did you do it? At that point, we don't know what Jeon did until we get to the police station. It was revealed that Jeon touched someone who was already in a relationship and that someone was not his wife. It was his sister. And he even threatened Jeon, hey, if you do this again, I'm going to kill you. And then he turned to Nabi and gave her advice. Hey, go find a more decent guy. And when I heard him say that, I totally agree. And then after that, this is where Nabi decided to end things because she doesn't like her position in this entire situation. Jeon, he didn't like it. He says, hey, I want to stay friends. Nabi is thinking, oh, you want someone stupid so you can continue playing around. Jeon said, oh, it's not like that. But then Jeon said, wait, weren't you okay with how things were before, you know, friends with benefits? But then Nabi answered with, hey, I pretended to think that everything was okay. And I knew that you weren't sincere this entire time. And then eventually Jeon he agreed to ending things, but then he said, remember, you're the one that decided to end things. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, th not gonna lie, that's a jerk move. It it's happened before in real life, obviously, but yeah, that's a real jerk move. And then after that, we see Nabi at home. She's crying. The majority of this episode, you can tell that Nabi cannot stop thinking about Jeon. And I can't blame her. I don't blame her for that. I mean, with everything that they've done together, and I mean everything, she can't stop thinking about him. She even went to his department to, to try to look at him. She even agreed for him to be on the same team with her. She could have said no, but she said yes instead. And then for Jeon, I mean, there are butterflies everywhere, so it's pretty hard to forget about Nabi. So I guess this episode is the turning point for Jeon to change, right? Now, remember in this episode, at the hospital, Sora asked Jeon, what's up? She knew something was wrong. Jeon said, I'm sick of myself. So that means he wants to change. I'll believe it when I see it. Because remember in the previous episode, he says, I want to set my butterflies free. But then later on, he denied it. So if he, if now he says he wants to change again, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. And then fast forward, Nabi is at Jeon's place now. An awkward moment at first, but then Jeon apologizes, you know, with everything that happened. And he even says to her, I want to change. But for Nabi, she's thinking to herself, don't think too much into his words because he might deny it later on. And that's what I just said before. If he wants to change, I'll believe it when I see it. Then let's get to Sora. On campus, she went there to go see Jeon. She's on the phone. She's talking to someone else. She's thinking about cutting her hair. Remember that part, cutting her hair. Because what Nabi said at the end, I was like, damn. But anyway, so Nabi bumps into Sora. Sora drops her lighter. It's the same lighter with the butterfly that Jeon has. Nabi picks it up. She realizes, oh, it's the same one and gives it to Sora. Sora asks, hey, are you Nabi? And then she says, hey, I'm here to see Jeon, 
but then Nabi says, oh, he might be busy. Nabi gets a little bit tense. Remember, she still likes Jeon. She asks Sora, what's your relationship with Jeon? Sora says, we used to date. And then she says, we're seeing each other again. So it looks like we have a love triangle because I don't think Sora is playing around. I don't think so. But then what Nabi said at the end, she says, hey, you should keep your hair like that because Jeon likes to do it with your hair tied. Damn. Now for Nabi saying that last line, I can confidently say that this is her way of saying, bitch, we fighting. Now let's talk about Gyuyeon's and Bitna's relationship. These two are my favorite couple, more than the main characters, to be honest. So at first, these two were not on speaking terms. He's trying to abort her. She's shocked that he's eating mint chocolate chip since they both don't like it. And then one night, Gyuyeon gets a call from a friend, Seun, that Bitna is drunk. Hey, come pick her up. Then for Bitna, she's drunk. She's complaining to Gyuyeon about, hey, why did you eat that mint chocolate chip? You don't like it. You really like that girl so much. And this is where these two have their very drunk slash sober romance moment. And this is also where Gyuyeon, he confess that every night he can't sleep because he's always thinking about her. And then out of nowhere, he kisses her and then eventually does give her a piggyback ride. So I'm guessing this is where their relationship starts. Unless Bitna uh, gives a, you know, drunk excuse. Oh, I wasn't myself and so forth. For Seoul and Jiwon, at first they were arguing at the beginning of the episode. And then later on, Seoul apologizes. But then after that, we didn't really get much. But after watching the trailer for the next episode, I think that's where we're going to see more of their relationship. But then also, Seun, who, who has a crush on Seoul, I think he might do something a little iffy. So my impression on the episode, um, to be honest, to be completely honest, the other characters' relationships are a lot more interesting than the main characters. Hey, this is just my opinion. For, for Seoul and Jiwon's relationship and... Uh, Bitna and Gyuyeon, to me, they're a lot more realistic. For Nabi's and Jeon's, it's kind of a mix of real, but mostly fantasy though. It's good to see that the relationships between characters are progressing, but then you can already tell that there is some sort of obstacle in the way. Well, actually, that's every drama. <laughs> the only thing I don't like about this episode is the time difference between Nabi ending things with Jeon to them being friends again. It wasn't that long. In my opinion, if they waited until the next episode for them to be friends again, I think that would be more believable. But yeah, it wasn't that long. I'll say what, a week, two days? I don't know. But yeah, it wasn't that long. Even Nabi said it herself, it wasn't that long. So anyway, that's the gist of the episode in my review. If there's anything I might have missed, please leave it in the comments below. Other than that, if you like this video, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. See ya.